Hi, welcome to Stat Stuff. I'm Matt Hansen. This lesson is part of an extended discussion on identifying potential root causes for eventually building a data collection plan, or DCP. In this lesson, I'll specifically be reviewing the five whys concept and how it could be used for building the DCP. So it's essential that you at least review the previous lessons that first introduce you to the DCP and CNE diagram. But for now, let's quickly review again how the five whys concept fits into the discussion on identifying root causes. Remember, what we're trying to do here is to build the transfer function. That's the y equals f of x. In order to do that, we have to begin with trying to build the data collection plan, or the DCP. So we should already know what the project y is. So now we need to find out what are those potential x's for that transfer function. And it's the data collection plan that's going to help us ensure that we have enough data for measuring that y and every one of those x's within the transfer function. So what we're going to review again is the overall method for how we might build the DCP and started off with as an input to our meeting with the team it's going to begin with making sure we have the defined phase items which would also include the Y and the defect definitions all those things that we should have up to this point make sure we have those already defined before the meeting even begins and then for the meeting itself the process that will actually follow during the meeting is going to begin with this next step which is validating the Y and the defect definition with the team to make sure they agree with it and next we want to identify what are all the potential X's that the team believes are the X's that could be part of the transfer function. Or we might use several tools again like the cause and effect diagram which is also the fishbone and Ishikawa diagram and also the five Y's tool. Once we've identified the potential X's then we move on to the next step which was narrowing down those potential X's to what we consider to be the most critical X's. This is where we might use the cause and effect matrix or the CNE matrix to figure that out. Then the last part here is an output from the meeting. What we're going to do is our last step is to build the data collection plan, that DCP, for those critical X's we identified. And this is where we're going to use something like the sample size calculator, as well as consideration for the short and long-term data and the data collection plan in order to, to build this final data collection plan from this process. Okay, now let's begin and define what I mean by the five whys concept. Well, the five whys refers to a method of asking the question why around five times for each of the causes in order to drill down to what you think could be the potential root cause. Now when we say five whys, it doesn't mean it has to be exactly five questions if the team believes they've already drilled down to reasonable depth. So you may find that three, maybe four questions are enough. Or you might find you have to go at least to six or seven times of asking why until you get to some reasonable depth. The point is you continue to ask why for each thing until you've gotten to some level where you think you've gotten to the potential root cause. Now there's a great illustration I like to use in order to help explain how this five whys example can work. I don't know if this is a true example. I've tried to research this myself, but even if it's not a true example, it's still a great example to show how something like this could work in the five whys tool. So in the 1960s, Washington DC officials in charge of the Jefferson Memorial were feared that the Jefferson statue would be damaged by constantly washing off the bird droppings. Their plan was that they wanted to encase the statue in a thick layer of plastic that would cost about $300,000 for the encasement and cost about $20,000 a year to maintain it. But a GAO auditor came in and started asking why. So the auditor first asked, well, why do we want to encase the statue in plastic? Well, the engineer responded, because the constant cleaning of the statue will quickly deteriorate it. Well, then the auditor asked, well, why does it need cleaning so often? Well, the engineer responded, because the birds in here leave droppings on it. Well, the auditor asked, well, why are there so many birds in here? Well, the engineer replied, because they're attracted to all the spiders in here. And the auditor asked, well, why are there so many spiders in here? Well, the engineer responded, because they're after the flies coming at night from the tidal basin. The tidal basin refers to this body of water that's in front of the Jefferson Memorial. And finally, the auditor asked, well, why are there so many flies in here? And the engineer responded, because they're attracted to the lights that are illuminating the memorial at nighttime. Well, then the auditor just went out, bought a $2 solenoid that would delay the lights until 30 minutes after dark. The flies were then attracted to other light sources, so the spiders and birds left, and it was no longer necessary to encase the statue. Now again, I love this illustration because it just shows how you can continue to get to the root cause of the problem. Once you identify the root cause, then you have something you can use to fix that root cause, which obviously which is a much simpler and more elegant solution than the original solution they were originally intending with this example. Again, I don't know if it's a real example or not, but it sure is a nice one to illustrate how the 5Ys tool could work. 
All right, before we close this lesson, let's discuss how we can apply some of these concepts in a practical way. I'd like you to identify a prior project or initiative that you might have worked in your organization and then try using the five wise approach for that project by answering some of these questions. First of all, what was used as the critical metric, that project why in that particular project or initiative? And how would you define a defect for that project? This would be that ultimate undesirable effect for which you're trying to find a root cause. And why did the organization experience that effect? and then continue asking a series of why questions until you reach a reasonable level that could represent what the root cause is for that undesirable effect. Well, that wraps up this lesson. Check out statstuff.com for many more resources that can help you achieve powerful results. I'm Matt Hansen. Thanks for watching.